in this video since i just want to take this moment to actually speak about strange anointings strange anointings that are happening within our church walls so the context is not uh, normally like i used to speak based on just african context no this is a global thing whether in the united states there's strange anointings that are happening there are people that are operating by double spirits what i mean what do i mean by double spirits okay let me just make a simple example recently about just a few weeks ago a brother of mine called me to minister to his church this wasn't something that was actually planned but he had to just bring it abruptly because he was disturbing a specific flu that had taken place so my brother uh, invited a preacher it's not just a preacher but it's a prophet from outside of south africa so this guy actually comes i won't mention the country because i'm not really fighting people or a country no but this is something that is even here in south africa without him no just referring to him but even here in south africa we have strange anointings that are just taking place so the guy came and then he was booked to you know uh to minister for about seven days here in south africa and then when the guy came my brother contacted me it must have been i think on the third or the fourth day of the conference or the crusade which might uh, be like wednesday or thursday at night and then he sent me a message and he said you know i just cannot talk to anyone but i just need you you know to just specifically speak to you i called this minister from outside of south africa to come and minister to our ministry this site and then my brother tells me only to find that i am to regret because the person is not who he says he is and then my brother tells me uh, i i actually uh, began we didn't even waste time actually i said to him okay let's pray we prayed that wednesday and that thursday i think maybe for three days or two days we prayed in the morning sometimes i couldn't catch up on the mornings i told him but i would pray at night 10 o'clock because my brother was so concerned to say i'm praying that this does not affect my ministry because of having brought this person here apparently he knows this guy from way before the guy would come to south africa before to minister so they knew him via their spiritual father who was a prophet back then now not to actually get deeper to the matter of the fact but the prophet was known by newspapers the story i was shown by another brother so this is my crew around me this is the brother and some other brothers and another one so we have ministries we're running ministries now the brother that called this prophet he of us of all of us he has the biggest ministry it's really big he has done some strides very wonderful and i complimented him it's beautiful what he's been doing so when he calls the now this guy was a friend or a brother spiritually to their spiritual father my friend's spiritual father went on in a very west journey the guy took his girlfriend the girlfriend that he had before well thank god my brother never took back that girl so he's happily married now to a wonderful woman so after that so the guy the prophet he went on to have a lot of things you know uh, from people cars and then people went they came back took all those cars they gave him it was just some awkward stuff impregnating girls and ladies in his church and then he impregnated a lot of ladies there uh, prophet who was a spiritual father of my brother and another thing is at first when i saw him i thought he was operating by the spirit of god only to find that the prophet actually had a a double spirit what i mean by a double spirit this is a person that actually in position they are of god in position hear me very well here in position in position as a child of god you have the holy spirit on the inside of you dwelling you the holy spirit will never dwell in a body uh, in a spirit where at the same time would share with demons he would never do that when he takes authority over a spirit the human spirit he fully takes authority and he's the only one that indwells the holy spirit and he seals the believer's spirit that nothing comes in nothing goes out according to ephesians 1 13 to 14 in position this is what every believer is like so if you are possessed with the holy spirit you can no longer be possessed by demons as a believer now however i want you to hear me carefully 
A believer possessed by the Holy Spirit from the new birth as a Christian, in position they have the Holy Spirit, possessing their spirit in them. They are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But in operation, they can yield to two type of forces. They can yield to the Holy Spirit and they can yield to demonic work. I'm about to show you how. Or a believer can be demonized. That is, which is what I'm about to explain. So this is what the spiritual father of my friend was because I particularly felt a familiar spirit around him, though I did not know, but I sensed an awkward spirit when we, it was actually a brother of mine invited him to Kahi, so I saw him twice. And then I could deduce that something is wrong with this man. That was long before. Okay, he passed away very early. It was very bad how he passed away. He had, like before passing away, he lost his mind to some stuff. Now, my brother went on to actually call this man they knew whom the spiritual father introduced. So my brother had a bad parting, the brother I'm talking about, with his spiritual father. He ended up not submitting under him because of many things. Apart from the issue of having taken his girlfriend, he forgave him. But then there were many things that were just not right in ministry. And then he passed away very badly at an early age, the spiritual father. Now, later he remembered that he has a brother outside of South Africa because the guy comes outside of South Africa and then he calls the brother to come and minister. Now, when he's here, my brother regrets and then he asks me to pray and help him. Now, my brother asked him, I say, why is it that you don't chase him away? Because I would have dealt with it in that manner. I would have given him the money I agreed to give him and then I would have chased him away. That is how I handle things in ministry. I, I come out very raw, trust me, as much as I can be sweet looking. Even many people who followed me in the LCM knows when the, when there were prophets that came and then they were not in line, I would rebuke them in front of people because sometimes as a, a minister, you'd have to uh, decide, do I let this guy fool them? And then when he's gone, I try to mix to fix the situation. But in that manner, you'd realize that you would lose the people because the people, they would understand that he's gone, but now he's trying to fix things when the guy is gone. So many times I would rebuke the guy in front of people to show that the guy is wrong. So, but that is something for another day. Now, in this instance, my brother told me the reason why he cannot, you know, um, chase him away. Still for me, I would realize, still for me, I felt with all these reasons I would have chased him. But anyway, I respected my brother's territory and his decision because I believed and I believe that he knew what he was doing. Now, my brother abruptly contacted me on Saturday because this uh, crusade was to be ending on Sunday. And he says, can you please come and minister for me tomorrow? I cannot have this guy finish this up. Little did I know that the guy had promised the minister that he was going to anoint them. And my brother knew very well because he understood impartations of ministry, how that an impartation is something. And this guy was going to be imparting his spirit to the entire church. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm speaking this. Uh, this is fresh from just a happening. So I did go there. I ministered and a lot of people didn't like it because they were not anointed. They were not imparted. I'm not a person who imparts and stuff. And my ministry is basically not, it doesn't hinge on prophecy, but it hinges on the word of God. Now, my brother who called me, I will tell you that amongst the people that are around me, this is the one true man of God I know. I think God confirmed about three of the people around my life they are calling upon. He's one of them. He works so much in love. He's a true 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 prophet i need to tell you that so with this happening then it's when uh, a lot of people who actually came a lot of people some of them came from actually the prophet my brother was submitting under, and then they submitted to my brother because that prophet passed away and then he left the ministry in a shipwreck so they came so now they knew this guy from that relationship so they were offended in how things turned out i don't blame them i know my brother made a mistake i spoke to him he should have told them to say i'm cutting him he should have been open with them he wasn't but with all of that i know god will protect him with whatever and then the rumors that are going behind because sometimes you know people that come from a church different church and then they submit to you they have a specific relationship they have they have a certain way where they can drive things behind your back so let me cut the story short to say that is how things turned out so now what i want to tell you about is that the pastor or the prophet who came came with something that many would call a lying spirit 
So a lying spirit in many cases, many people don't understand. It doesn't just fabricate prophecies. I'm going to be talking about two types of spirits that are operating here. Not just lying spirits, but there's some type of spirit that is operating in the church. In operation, the ministry is demonized. And I'm speaking globally, even on the United States, because of love of money from prophets, from pastors and stuff. So this uh, guy... A, a lying spirit he used was there's a specific woman he has a relationship with in the ministry because of that woman he had a relationship with them prior to the ministry they were in before when he used to be called by his friend who was a spiritual father of my brother back then. So these guys can hear and listen and then get stories behind the back. And now when they come up front, they are making like it's prophecies. So which this is what we call lying. So I said a lying spirit and many of you are like everything you guys, you spiritualize. Well, in First Kings 22, the Bible tells us of a lying spirit. The Bible says that there were two kings who met together, Ahab and Jehoshaphat. One was the king of the northern tribes of Israel. The other one was the king of Judah. So then the king of Israel said to the king of Judah, Would you go with me to war to claim a piece of land that, that has been taken by my enemy? And then the king of Judah said, I will go with you only under one condition. If God says I go with you. And the northern king called out his prophets, over 400 of them. And when they came, they all said, go, you will win. Go, you will win. Go, you will win. And then the king of Judah, after all these prophets, he turned to the king of Israel and he said, Do you happen to have any other prophet apart from these ones? The king of Israel said, There's one called Micaiah. That young man doesn't like me. Everything he speaks is always against me. And the king of Israel knew better to say, Call him. And when they called Micaiah, when Micaiah came, Micaiah began to say, Now, God says, go, you will win. And then the king of Israel said, how many times should I tell you to tell me the truth when you speak before me? And then Micaiah began up a strange vision. And he says, before I came, I saw God lifted up. He sees a heaven. And he says, and the hosts of heaven were all around God. And God asked, and he says, I'm looking for one to go and deceive the kings on earth to go to war. Ahab and, 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 and his army. And he says, and God asked, and he says, who will go and deceive them? And he says, these spirits began to speak, all of them in heaven. And one came up front and says, I will go. And God says, how will you deceive them? Well, um, I want to you to hold on now before I even go higher and tell you that the Bible means what it says. A lot of preachers would read this and begin to try to interpret in a different way than it is. I'm going to use the word as is. And on top of that, I'm going to use it even in the Hebrew, how it appears. Because many people say, mm, in the Hebrew language it says, I read it in the Hebrew language too. Now, the interesting part is that when God asks, he asks the Spirit to say, how will you deceive them? I know that a lot of people, this will be against every theology we've been taught. Myself as well. I've been taught that God can never do this. God to say, how will you deceive? Is there any Spirit that will go down on earth and deceive them? Well, the Bible says what it says. And then the Bible says, Micaiah says, the Spirit said to God, I will be a lying spirit to his prophets, and I will say this and that. And the Bible says, God said, indeed, you will persuade them. Go. So the Bible doesn't really tell us who this spirit is, this lying spirit. But we know, we know that this is actually the father of lies, Satan. The Bible shows us in the book of Job that he has access to the third heaven since he left or he was kicked out. He has access to actually step in and accuse us or cause some things. So now God does use uh, Satan to actually be a judgment like in this example. I know this is foreign. This is outside of our theology. God is too good to do this. Yes, God is still good. He's still merciful as you are about to understand so even when he uses this enemy the devil now he actually has a boundary when it comes to that there are things god limits his power even when he allows him to be a judgment like in this sort so 
when he came on earth, you know it's 400 prophets. And if you know and you have wisdom of scriptures, you know by now that Satan is not omnipresent. He cannot possess or inspire 400 prophets at the same time. But you should know by now that this means that he actually went with his cohorts, like his minions or demons, and then he possessed all 400 of them. But he was the instigator or the center of these lies. So these are spirits of lies. Hence, I said spirit of lies. Now, in many cases, I've made a video, many, uh, I think it was last year concerning this. Some of you saw it, of how familiar spirits creep into the church. Now, in many cases, when prophets are under pressure to perform, many of them would actually begin to open themselves up to lies in order to try to entertain a ministry that called them. Because many times people, he hated when prophets get to tend to focus on the weight. They want them to perform. So prophets would be under pressure to perform. And you find that God in that ministry wants to discipline them. He doesn't give them any weight. And then you find the prophet now begin to manufacture things that are not there. So this is where now some Sometimes you find they open themselves up to lies. If a spirit of lies won't get in and create pressure for them to end up lying, sometimes you find that this would be a prophet finding out information about the people in the church behind their sins, and then that information he uses it, and then he gets to people. There was another prophet who did this in Swaneville. I won't mention his name uh, due to some issues. He went out, he began to take over ministries. He was called by every ministry. He he used to do this way he got information from people in the church and then he would be like accurate prophecies when he's prophesying these are spirit of lies it went on the prophets who operate by this they don't become you know innocent in the long run it went on where he was found with issues of so much adultery fornication it always follows these things they always follow these things and then boom and then after that sooner than you know they have crashed with their ministry so these are not new things that we seeing these parents have been there so this is not the only uh, we're not the only ones who are seeing this so in in position a prophet can be really a man of god as i'll show you from the word of god but in operation he can be demonized not not in position in position in his spirit he is god is possessed of god but in operation he can yield to demons and he can yield to the holy spirit and god can use a vessel that is both demonized at the same time he can use it what do i mean by this i'm gonna show you from the scriptures there's an instance in the book of matthew 16 the bible tells us it says to us that jesus when he was in philippi caesarea he asked his disciples who do men say that I am and then they began to speak you are this and this and then he asked them but who do you say I am and then they turn out and Peter confesses you are Christ son of the living God the Lord turns to Peter and he says blessed are you Simon Bajona flesh and blood cannot it's impossible that the flesh can reveal this to you but this came from a direct revelation from my father which is in heaven so we see that Peter saw this by revelation and just in the same chapter, in the same chapter, in the same day, we see something remarkable. The Lord turns and tells his disciples in the same place, he says, I'm going to go now into Jerusalem and now I'm going to be uh, killed for three days. And then Peter turns and he says, that be far from you, Lord. And then Jesus, he shows us something. We thought it's Peter until the Lord opens his mouth. He says, be behind me, Satan, because you care not for the things of God. So we see that the enemy, the devil, now he moved through Peter in this. Now, this is what I'm trying to say, show you. The same vessel a few hours ago that saw by the Holy Spirit that Jesus is the Son of God is the same vessel a few hours later, a couple of hours later, that is demonized or maybe accessed by the devil to try to stop the Lord from his victory or his assignment. The point that I'm trying to show you is simply this. The enemy or the Lord can use a vessel that is also demonized so this is where many people get to be confused because they can see a man of god now there's many types of prophets that are we have in the church some prophets are demonized but because of their hunger for power let me explain this i hope to not confuse you we have a lot of people now who wanted power 
and then they went out and sold their souls to the enemy they were true men of god you know they went out and then sold themselves to the world or to the powers of the devil don't you know that when the antichrist comes he will be able to call power from heaven and fire from heaven and the bible says he will he resurrect a dead horn so we see power that the antichrist will flow in hence now we cannot just say does it have power it must be god no there's a source of power that comes from darkness. There's a source of power that comes from God. There's prophecies and prophets that use a power that comes from familiar spirits. It's the kingdom of darkness. They went out to specific shamans or sangomas and lo- to go and get this power. Or they went out to these doctors who give people ritual money or stuff and then went out to have these powers to prophesy. And then they came and used them in the church. Now the thing that confuses a lot of people is this. You find that these men also operate in casting out of devils. Now a lot of people are confused by this. If they cast out devils, they must be pure because they come from God. Didn't the Bible tell you that they will say that day, we prophesied, we cast out devils in your name. That is because casting out of devils is it comes out in three different operations and one of them is in the name of Jesus. That should make sense therefore. So because of the name of Jesus, they stand in a position to actually cast out devils, but though themselves, they are not clean vessels. The mistake that we make as the church is this. We think, we think and we deduce. If someone prophesies, cast out devils, they must be clean. That is not true. For a vessel to actually speak a message of God, laws of purity do not apply. He doesn't have to be a pure vessel. Saints, a person when he's used by God, to be used by God, God only needs availability, not purity. The donkey in the Old Testament spoke because it was available, not because it was pure. So the anointing can cause funny things to happen or strange, wondrous, miraculous things to be observed and seen. But that doesn't mean that the person to whom the power is moving is pure. So the anointing can move with someone who actually operates by double spirit, demonized and the Holy Spirit. God does that. I'm about to show you the reason why. Now, Firstly, we have a prophet also spoken of in the book of Numbers. His name is Balaam, uh, the son of Pio. He came from Mesopotamia. The Bible tells us he was a soothsayer. The first, second, third time he was prophesying, he was speaking by the spirits. The Bible says he went out to do his incantations. The third, the fourth time, it's when God spoke through him. Is he a clean vessel? No, he was a soothsayer. And even when he was done, he went back to his soothsaying. Hence, the Bible tells us in the book of Joshua that they had to kill him. Judgment came upon him. Now, does that mean that this man was used by God? No, he was used by familiar spirit, but God could actually access him. And then God used him to speak a prophecy of Christ's death that would come in the New Testament. Though he was not a clean vessel because he was a soothsayer. So this should actually allow you to see that God can actually speak through a vessel. Just because God speaks through a vessel, it does not mean it is clean. So another thing, like I said, is the donkey. Now, this doesn't only stop there, but I also want to show you something. So what happens with us is that we have ministers. You find some of them are innocent. They don't go out to sangomas or these shamans seeking these powers to operate in church. But you find that someone would be finding this prophet went to the sangomas and then this pastor is innocent and be like, I would love the power you have. And this person will be like, I'm going to give him partition. They do not know. So whose fault is it? It's not God's fault. It's that person's fault. Because God said, do not be deceived. Why didn't God say pray that you're not deceived? No, he didn't say pray. But he says, do not be. And do you know that in the Greek, that word is an imperative mood. It means it's a command. So if God can command us to not be deceived, it means that we have the strength and the resources to not be deceived. So which means God holds us responsible because we are not using the heavenly utility that is at our disposal to actually deal away with deception. Hence now we are responsible. My people perish because they don't pray, no, because they lack knowledge. 
is the, the is the knowledge now not accessible no it is accessible through the internet and everything so we cannot blame god but we can blame ourselves when we're deceived hence now our pastors come and our preachers come they raise their hands and this prophet who went out to get this power somewhere lays hands on them so you see that this man is really called of god that is being imparted to by position he has the holy spirit in him and he is served but now by operation he is going to be demonized because he's yielding to the force that this one went to take willfully and knowingly but you know he doesn't know and the next thing you know when he goes down to his church he has now a ministry that has actually opened up to a demonic operation of the spirit lying spirits always lead to familiar spirits when they open a believer up to familiar spirit that believer is long gone so i'm going to show you another example now so and then you find that this pastor goes down to his church and then he ministers and then he ministers and he doesn't know why things begin to fall apart have you ever went to a ministry or a prophet and each time when you just submitted to this ministry and then you'd find that your finances they get to be stuck and everything in your life is hard you were going smooth but now you have problems after another or have you ever realized that after you've sown a seed to this particular ministry or prophet problems came after another financially and then people who were never sick began to be sick and everything you have even your savings were emptied that is because people have opened themselves up to ministers that have been demonized or that have a double spirit in them so the church should be uh, careful with this so i'm striving for the purity of the spirit i'm not going to be saying everything but i'm striving for the purity of the spirit the spirit that is of god without these spirits being introduced in our walls let's fight against that we've got these great top preachers evangelists who went out to graveyards and they went out they said they wanted power from a man of god who was dead so they've been demonized because they've opened themselves up i know one minister who is so powerful here in africa i've never seen a man of god with such influence here in africa this man started so well in ministry doctrinally wow he was something else the next thing you know it's when we found out how that he went to a minister went to a graveyard to actually get power from this man of god or anointing from this man of god who was dead and then he went to this guy and then he got impartation and he also went you know something like in a grave because he wanted an anointing but i cannot say a man of god is ignorant they are hungry for power and then as a result this minister was also very influential today he's beginning to speak up controversies that not even a person who is stupid in scriptures would make you realize that this is outright heresy because of now this person are beginning to gain a stronger hold the thing with spirits you might find that you open them yourself up 10 years ago and in the next 10 years they, what they do is they begin to sink more deeper into you they don't readily just expose you like that they grow with you so i've been seeing him making mistakes just because of this light stupid era where he went on to a man of god's grief because he sought for power how can we do that in the new testament because we can only see that in in the book of the old testament when elisha was dead mind you saints elisha elisha took anointing from elijah elijah did eight miracles on in all and then elisha was given a double portion so it means that he had to have 16 miracles to do do you realize that elisha died with only 15 miracles until his uh, bone was bones were put into a sepulchre and then there was war they threw out a dead young man when the dead young man came into contact with his bones the life kicked and then he became alive why because of his body died with the 16th miracle so it meant even though the man would not complete it but the spirit would complete it in his death and the source of that or the medium would be his body and then we've turned out to make that a doctrine to say that when men of god are dead their bones contain an anointing that is a heresy god didn't tell the people in the old testament to say go to his grief that was a thing that happened by coincidence of the spirit so it's important that we understand when something is made by coincidence of the spirit and when we try to fabricate it in out of, of out of will we cannot make a doctrine out of that we can't we just can't in the book of x8 we have a beautiful example here where philip went to the city of samaria to actually preach christ to them 
And when he came to Samaria, the Bible says there was Simon a sorcerer. But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria. I like it with the old King James. He says he used to bewitch people here, claiming that he was someone great. Now, I want you to see this. Verse 13, then Simon also believed. Now, the Bible is the book of the Holy Spirit. This is a statement from the Holy Spirit when he wrote it through Luke. He says, then Simon also believed. So did he believe for the truth when he saw miracles by Philip? He did. The miracles are chapter, are verse 10 and 11. Then it says, and in verse, uh, in verse 13, then Simon also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. So here is a man who believes. But now, is the hunger for power which he had before the gospel eradicated after he saved? No. Look, verse 18. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone to whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Isn't this guy a believer? He is. Isn't he baptized? He is. Isn't he born again? He is. But his long habits of hunger for power still creep in. And the Bible says, Peter says to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God would be purchased with money. You have no, neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. So he still had a responsibility to deal with his heart. And then the Bible tells us, it says, <clears throat> because of this, P he, Peter began to pronounce judgment and then he, he asked Peter to say, may all those things you said not come to pass. Pray to God that they do not come to pass in my life. So the point that I want to show you is this. You find that most of them are really saved, but hunger for power remains. So because of they are saved in op operation, in position, they are the children of God. Their spirit is fully, fully possessed of the Holy Spirit. But they are susceptible in operation to be demonized, to yield to demons because of this. Like Peter that we saw. Firstly, he said, Jesus, you are son of God. The next thing later, the devil possesses him to speak a message to Jesus. The same person who was used by God. Why does this happen? Why does this happen? That is because the answer we find it in the Gospel of Matthew 13. In Matthew 13, the Bible tells us, it says, Jesus spoke, he says, uh, he spoke another parable. He said to them, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. So this is the church. We are the wheat. But while the Lord went away, to come back in his second coming, the enemy came at night while we were sleeping and he sought tears, 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 sorry. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also appeared. So we cannot really see outright the demonized until when the work of the ministry is more exposed and then it grows. And then the Bible says, So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How, how then does it have tears? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us to? Do you want us then to go and gather them up? These are angels. But the Lord said, No, lest while you gather up the tears, also you uproot the wheat with them. So, so that the Lord doesn't deal away with the order of the church and with the power of the church and the seed that the church is in or the seed of the church. It's important that he lets the works of the evil also grow alongside these good ones. But they are in the same field, which is the same world or the same church. So it's important for God to let all them grow. Once we see the power of God coming greater and becoming beautiful, at the same time, we're going to see the more the power of the enemy within the church becoming exposed. And you see all of these things, these heresies that are taking place outside there. This is the reason why. Now, some men of God, you realize that they did this where they allowed their ministries to have a double spirit. They did it. Not like a, in full knowledge, but it's because they were deceived. Because these are the days of deception. How did they hand themselves over therefore? They went out to get anointings or an impartation from wrong men of God. There's a pastor, I won't speak about him. His ministry started well. It went well and everything was fine. And then he went out to this man that sold oils and everything and stuff and stuff. And his ministry was divided after that. And then he was attacked by the enemy in his in his body, the sickness as well. So the point I'm trying to show you is many start well, 
They do not know the people they submit under that these are people who've actually went out to sell themselves to the enemy willingly. And then when they take their anointing, bring it to their churches. And the next thing you know, our ministers have double spirits operating in them. There's many prophecies that are operating today in church that people call accurate. But most of us who sit and know can tell you that is not the spirit of God. And then after those people are done, they will cast out devils through the name of Jesus. And then people will say they are truly men of God. No, that doesn't mean that. So I'm warning the church now to be very discerning as I'm about to bring a video again. I'm about to also bring another video concerning how to have discernment. We need it more than ever. It's worse now. So be careful, saints. Come out of Babylon. Come out of this. Some churches are beginning to practice these things, though they do not know that they are calling these spirits that have demonized the church, these double spirits, where we are selling oils, we are selling water, we are selling material, we are selling souls, we are preaching doctrines that are foreign, that are not biblical, but that we think that they are deliverance ministers ministers are demonized as a double spirit operating in the church we need it out we need a church that is clean some of us who are mature enough will just sit down in a church there's nothing remarkable they're just singing and will tell you that this church had once encountered or has been demonized to some extent or not there's a spirit that's operating it's not only the holy spirit but it's also this because remember in operation, God does not require clean vessels. He only requires surrender availability. God can use the same resources or vessels that the enemy accesses. Because he has to let the tears grow alongside the wheat. Get ready for what's about to happen. It's becoming worse with deception. And people like us are going to stand up and say, No, we speak for the purity of the spirit. We are tired of double spirit in the church. People like me now want the purity of the spirit. We're tired of the spirit of lies operating in the church. We're tired of familiar spirits operating in the church. We seek the purity of the spirit. We say go back to the purity of the spirit. Now, what will happen to people who submit under these men of God, who are demonized? What will happen? Jesus showed us in the book of Revelation. And it's also interesting that the book of Revelation shows us that these things God anticipated. So I'm not going to be dealing with that now. If you want that, say part two, and then I'll make part two for that. What will happen to these people who are actually operating by a double spirits or who are in ministries of people that are operating with double spirits? What will happen to them? Just say part two, and then I'll make that video. Saints, God has put so much passion in me for only scripture and only the pureness of the spirit. The power that be of God, not the power that be of the devil. I want to make you this video as an example. I want you to listen to this video as an example of NJ's toll. This is one thing that made me say I respect him. He is a true man of God. Calling Dr. Senachera to Omotosa. I approach. Nesbid Jom Tadimi. Who figured Pupisilem Vawan. Nala, I figure. Can't you operate on my mind? When NJ stood up and said, there's a man called Tim Omodos. I'd never heard of him. The first time I heard that name was from NJ's toll, evangelist NJ. And he says he operates with another power and that power doesn't come from God. Listen, people in his church were coming with testimonies of accurate prophecies, coming with testimonies of cars being blessed and everything. And people were speaking that his ministry is beautiful and he used to bring prophecies to people that were accurate. What today is called forensic prophecy, IT numbers, the names. But NJ came and he says he operates with the spirit, but it's not from God. And he used to lay hands on people and people would fall. But NJ was able to tell the church, he says, this power he, he has is not from God. People 
we misinterpreted NJ, but I didn't because I didn't know Timu Motos. Only to find that many, many years later, even after the death of the evangelist, scandals would come out that the guy used to sleep with girls, put them into compounds that were secret, and not allowed to go to their homes. He's facing jail time now. And there's still people that are following him because they've allowed themselves to be blinded by these spirits that these men use. Some of these men started well, but for hunger, for power, and hunger, for fame, some for hunger, for more, not be saturated, not be satisfied with God's presence and his word. They've went on and chose this path. And then look at Timomot also now. He went on and then he's in jail and many things happened. And he's about to face his sentencing if he hasn't faced it yet. So I respected NJ for that. Now, I'm also telling the church to say, there's many men that people are thinking are men of God. They are not. They started well, but they've deviated. They are no more with the Spirit of God. They are no more with the Spirit of God. If you want part two, say part two. Because there's a lot to say. And I've only scrambled, but just a surface. I hope this will awaken you. To stay out of ministries where there's double spirit or something that you do not understand. Specifically prophetic movements, they are deemed that. Specifically deliverance ministries, they are deemed like that. Nigeria went on and began to introduce to us the selling of water in deliverance and stuff. We adopted that. Double spirit, double spirit, double spirit. I hope that this blessed you. Please speak on your testimonies. And what you've, what you've experienced. Have you ever given to some of these ministries and then things in your life turned out to be worse financially? Have you ever sold seed to them and then realized that things are worse and that you've sown a seed to, to, uh, to destruction? Speak your testimonies about your, your partners or maybe your family members. Comment below. Let's help others. Let's help those who are willing to come out. We're taking the church out of Babylon. Jesus says, come out of here, my people. Come out of here, my people. I also speak that come out of here, God's people. Come out of here. Come out of here. Because judgment is coming to this Babylonian spirit. And for the Lord to also let the spirit be in the church is also judgment. Don't you know that 1 Corinthians eleven nineteen says that there must be heresies for God to prove the truth from the, from the false it doesn't say they will be, it says they must. So which means God also need, needs these heresies to actually expose the truth from the false. But now, so that the elect are not also deceived, we're making such videos. Come out of here, my people. Come out of this devil spirit that is operating in the church. Come out. We seek the pureness of the spirit in Jesus' name.